I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to do another review. There's another paid request, this time from Paul Wilson. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any other type of videos or topics or what have you, reactions, re-reviews, what, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box, and I promise I'll get to it as soon as I can. But this is for The Wild Geese from 1978, and it's one of those films that Definitely the dawn of, well, not the dawn, but the, it's a look at the, the yesteryear of action films, movies like The Guns of Navarone, Where Eagles Dare, you know, those type of movies. Uh, at this, you have four middle-aged, seemingly over-the-hill mercenaries who get hired to rescue this deposed African president. And the four actors are Richard Burton, Roger Moore, Richard Harris, and this guy named Hardy Truder. And Richard Burton, he's been in quite a few stuff, including Exorcist 2. Roger Moore, of course, from many of the James Bond films. My favorite would be... I like Live and Let Die. Probably The Spy Who Loved Me. I would say that's my favorite of his, his James Bond films. Richard Harris, I've seen in other stuff too. Uh, the movie I think of is Orca, which I actually like Orca, the, the killer whale. Hardy Truder, I'm not too familiar with. But I would say the movie, it works because of those actors, because it's definitely you know, the age and time of no CGI, none of the filter stuff, you know, old school, men on a mission war type of movie with real explosions and you know stuff that we Sally was taking for granted because you don't see a lot of that stuff nowadays now I wouldn't say this is like one of my favorites like at the end of the day I thought it was okay that was all right bit long about two hours and 15 minutes give or take but the, the way it starts off, like I said, Richard Byrne is hired by this guy. He gets a team together. Richard Harris, he finds, talking with his kid, very, you know, loves his son. Nice sweetness to Richard Harris's character. Uh, then Roger Moore, he's a badass at the beginning, I should say, because he comes back to this meeting and he's told, these are drugs. I told you, I don't push drugs. What's the difference? Because I found a 19-year-old girl dying. And he gets very pissed about that. So he makes the two guys eat. You don't eat half of these drugs. You know, this. I think it was, it was a heroin or cocaine. I was maybe heroin. It's like, you don't eat half of this. And one guy's like, no, and shoots him in the head. He's like, well, 
You better have a big appetite because it's all yours. And <laughs> makes the guy eat the fucking drugs. And I'm like, wow, this is pretty good, you know, <laughs> setup for the, this character, Roger Moore. And the way they interact with each other, the dialogue, like Richard Burton calling Richard Harris a clown, an idiot. Well, I mean, no, actually, he calls Roger Moore that. Richard Burton calls Roger Moore a clown. Wow, well, clown idiot. Wow. You always were a flatterer. I, it doesn't work when I'm saying it, but Roger Moore has a fun demeanor and the actors work well together. And there's a little bit of action in the first half. Like, there's a scene where bad guys try to get Roger Moore and Richard Harris, like, punches through a door and drops a grenade. But first, they get a good chunk of men. They need to be trained. They realize they're a bit over the hill. Sadly, the, the time span is crunched up, so they gotta leave earlier than they're supposed to. Even some of the training, I like the guy training them. The way he taught. Almost like a... Not quite that bad. Not bad, as in... He's a little precursor to what you see in Full Metal Jacket, but nothing that crazy. And when I say bad, Arlie Ehrman did a wonderful job. It's just... You just want to strangle that drill sergeant. Not nearly that close, but just... Close to that attitude of, if some of you know me, those who don't, or in for a big, great fucking surprise. Or, that ridiculous, you're jumping from an airplane now, whorehouse window. And when they jump out of an airplane, it's real people doing it. It's real stunt people. It's real stuff. It's not fucking effects, CGI, and shit. This is when people had to do it for real. And when they do their mission, things go well. They know what they're doing. They're either killing people with crossbows. Interesting bit where they put on a gas mask and Richard Harris has this thing of cyanide. Which I've never seen that done before. I thought that was really interesting. Where you get... Like a bunch of bad guys, you know, a bunch of the, the the soldiers are sleeping. So then Richard Harris puts a gas mask on and has a like cyanide gas gun, it's, you know, sprays it on them to, to kill them. I didn't never seen that done before. I, that that was pretty interesting. And like they're rescuing the, the African president. Meanwhile, Roger Moore and his men, they're getting the airport secured. And all goes smooth. They know what they're doing. But of course, you know what's going to happen. They get fucked over. The plane lands and then leaves. <laughs> and then they have to figure out where how the fuck they're going to get out of Dodge. And pretty much the second half of the film is them being attacked in the bush. Getting shot at. Back and forth shooting. In order to try to survive. Uh, the bow scenes are fine. Uh, some nice decent explosions. Uh, there's a bit where an enemy airplane. Flies over and attacks a convoy. Uh, definitely some serious stuff. You know minion shot. Blood squibs. Some burning to death. As the thing explodes. Definitely raises the stakes. And the seriousness of the matter. I guess, it, maybe it's not the movie's fault, but it's just by this point in my life, I've seen so many other films kind of similar to this, whether it be The Expendables, and yeah, that has CGI, but I like The Expendables more than this, or even like The Dirty Dozen, uh, what was the, The Delta Force, <laughs> You know, different kinds of these men on a mission movies. And, like, the action scenes are fine. But they didn't really do anything that I was impressed with. And I don't know if that's really the movie's fault. That's more of just, I've seen so much. And there are films I like more. And this, you know, the pacing and you know, the action is fine. Like, the finale I had some problems with. Which I'll get into more in spoilers. But it's... At the end of the day, I thought 
it was okay because I had to be a sucker for this kind of this kind of simple, straightforward actress you don't see much of nowadays. I mean, you think of when there were films in theaters, even films that go to VOD, what have you, streaming, HBO Max, Netflix, Disney Plus. You don't see films unless they're dirt, dirt cheap. With shaky cam and piss poor cinematography, filters up the ass. But you know, bigger productions of soldiers or military men where they tip the ass and take names. and You don't see that a lot nowadays because it's considered old hat. It's considered too blasé or no we're, we gotta need a superhero movie we need some kind of big spectacle cgi turmoil of disaster and alien invasion or again more superheroes more superheroes more comic book movies and it's unless you get like a john wick you know that type of film maybe olympus has fallen maybe that type of film but you know, this was a big production at the time. You're not going to see this kind of stuff nowadays. You're really not, unless it's done dirt cheap. So it. And the end of spoilers starting now. Some of the issues I have with the third act is. Like Roger Moore. Roger Moore was becoming my favorite character in the movie because his demeanor. The way his, his dialogue was written. The first thing you see him in. Pretty badass. What he does. And the reason he does it. I can understand his point of view. You know, made some people eat a bunch of fucking drugs. And the third act. He was wasted. I don't mean like wasted like Grand Theft Auto. Or wasted. But. He doesn't get to do much. In the second half of the film. Not just the third act. But after. They've been fucked over. It's mainly some others tearing the president, getting some shootouts. One takes a bullet for the after president. Richard Burns shoots a little bit. They get to this village. The preacher, the priest who's there is like, get out of this village. Then later they tell He eventually tells him, oh, by the way, you go over there, there's a plane. You do, if you fix it up, you can fly it. You get some shooting from, from the other soldiers, like the enemy plane that fucks up the convoy and kills shoots burns up the men or Burton shooting using grenades Richard Harris there's a point he has like a little machine gun on the ground while people are giving the, the bullets I forget what kind of machine gun is called But Roger Moore doesn't really get to do anything. He doesn't get the... There's not scenes of him shooting, fighting. Like he, pretty much he's by the airplane. Just waiting. I guess technically he's important. He flies the airplane to get people out. But he, it's like, wow, you built him up as this badass. Let him be a badass in the third act. He doesn't really do anything in the second half, third act of the film. Other than fly a fucking plane. It's like... I just thought that was a waste of Roger Moore. Especially with the way he was built up at the beginning. I don't think they follow through with it in the second half of the film. I really don't. I don't know why. And in fact, when I first heard of this idea, I thought it would just be the four guys. Like these four people, as mercenaries, small crack team, they go in. Which, are, you know, they, they would get more to do, since there'd be only four. Okay, if they have more, maybe it's 10. But there's like 50. I think they said there's like 50 people that go with them. So then, maybe it's the fact that like, hey, these are four middle-aged, over-the-hill guys. So, hey, we can't expect them to do a whole lot. But it's like... At this point, was Roger Moore really over the hill? I mean, if you're talking about the days of... Uh, a View to a Kill... I can understand, but in 1978, uh, I don't know about that. So that was one disappointment, and the atrocities were fine, but there was nothing 
action wise, they made me go, wow. Like I, I swear I read reviews, spoilers. I read reviews where they say, oh, Roger Moore takes the airplane and he's shooting it. And I'm expecting like something Jason Statham and Stallone did in the Expendables with the airplane. To some reviewers are like, oh, Roger Moore, he took the plane and he's shooting the bad guys. I'm like, that never happened. Unless I saw a different version. Either I was passed out, I blanked out, I blacked out, or I saw a different version. So, you let me know which. I like Richard Byrne, Richard Harris, you know, they didn't do a whole lot. They did a little bit, but it was the other random men. And I'm sorry, the actors were fine, but I don't really have much of an emotional connection to these other men dying. I'm sad that they're dying because sad that they're dying, but I, I can't really say I had a big emotional connection to them. And so, again, it's not... You're out in the field shooting, throw a grenade, explosion, people fly. Okay, what else? There's not a whole lot else other than that. That's just me, though. That's just me. But with that said, spoilers. Spoilers. The rest of the film that happens is, and that's another thing that bothered me. A couple men are left. They get on the plane. Roger Moore's flying it. Richard Harris is running. He just shot in the leg. He tells Richard Burton to, to kill him. I'm like, dude, yeah, just tell Roger Moore to stop the plane for literally 10 seconds. He could get on the plane. And Richard Burton does say stop the plane, but it's like just literally 10 seconds. You just stop the plane and do it. But instead, you know, shoot some because I guess Richard Harris is worried that he'll be tortured. And then they get the president, the after president, and then he dies on the plane. So this really was completely pointless. This whole mission, this whole reason of doing this became pointless. Like, what was the reason of doing this? Like, they maybe that's the point of the movie itself, that they went through all this stuff and it ended up being completely fucking pointless. His whole point was to rescue this after president and they did, but then he dies on the plane of his wounds. And it's like, wow. So even that whole mission was pointless. That'd be like the first Expendables. You know, they, they do all this. And then that girl, the Psy, almost has the hots for. Someone comes up, shoots her in the head. <laughs> it's like, great job for that. I, so that was kind of made the end, the ending feel. And I'm sure there's a big meaning behind it. That's cool, but eh, wasn't really for me. So it kind of made the whole mission even more pointless. I, I guess that's the point is you can't win no matter what in the mercenary business. Maybe that's its point. Like really they went in there, a bunch of their men died and they had really nothing to show for it except Richard Byrne and Roger Moore go to the guy that turned to them, give me the money. They get the money, they shoot them, go their separate ways and at least they have the money. So I, I guess something came out of it. Eh. Listen, I like the four. I like the actors. Richard Burton does a good job barking orders, and you see why people look at him as the commanding officer. Richard Harris brought a nice sweetness to his character among the mercenaries. He's a guy that really wants to fight for something right and for justice. Roger Moore had a good sense of humor to his character. I wish he was utilized a lot more in the second half. A lot more than he did. And like the act, I wish the act was more spiced up a bit. I forget the director of this film. Sorry, this stupid hat. The other fucking situated. Should have done that before I did this. Sorry. Do you stop playing with your fucking hat? I know. Mia Culpa, Mia Culpa, apologize. I'm not an expert. I'm not a reviewer. I'm just some jackass behind a webcam.
Like Roger Moore, I wish he had more to do. Oh, to the Atches, spice it up. Like maybe some car chases. Maybe some people don't get mad at me for saying this, but Canon films, as much as people want to mock them, they knew how to shoot action. They knew how to do action scenes, and maybe a little bit of that Canon film action portion, I think, would have helped in this. Like I saw in some, you know, like, okay, American Ninjas, people wouldn't want to make fun of it. American Ninja has a variety of action. You got ninja action, fisticuff action, car chases, explosions, gunfire with Steve James in the group. There's a variety. Delta Force. You have a variety with the motorcycle and, you know, fucking missiles. You may deem it more cartoonish, but... I don't know, maybe that's more my cup of tea when it comes to action. I don't know, just... Anyway. It's not a bad film. Let's see, if you like those older, like, Where Eagles Dare, Guns of Navarro, and those type of films, and these actors interest you, give it a watch. It's not something I would ever watch again. It was it was okay, because the actors, and uh, at least a time of... Even a film like this, which I'm not a big fan of, I do appreciate the work they went into that will be taken, taken for granted in this day and age. In the day and age of Justice League and all these other films of uh, today. So with that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.